Now we have one more step which tries to use like some kind of threshold to suppress further step, further edges like which are not uh, real edges. And this is called hysteresis thresholding. The idea is instead of having a single value of threshold, we have two different values. So that, that gives us like some kind of bandwidth. Okay, so we call these uh, lower threshold and higher threshold. Now let's try to understand how this hysteresis th uh, thresholding works. So what we will do is, let's say the x-axis is just like different pixel locations in your, uh, in your, in your image. And this is the gradient magnitude, okay? Now let's say your low threshold is somewhere around this, the blue line, and higher threshold is somewhere around this line. Earlier, when you had just one threshold, then you just use it and anything which is above it, you will say edge. Anything below it, you say non-edge, but this is slightly different. So there are three steps. The first is you will look at the lower threshold and any pixel of magnitude, which is lower than this lower threshold, you will say that's not an edge. You will, you will completely ignore it, okay? So that's clear. Then you will look at the higher threshold. Then you will check the values. If the value is greater than the higher threshold, you will say it's an edge, okay? So those two steps are pretty clear. It's standard like from the previous algorithms. The interesting part is the central region. Okay, so now the idea is, when you think about, if you, if you visualize your edges in, in this image, let's say. So you can see like there is some kind of connectedness in these neighboring pixels when we are forming an edge. So for example, this edge over here, <clears throat> it's continuous, right? It's not that like one is uh, one pixel is edge, then there is, there is discontinuity, another is edge. We don't have that, right? So it's a continuous edge. And that's the intuition here. What we do is we, we try to find like those connected components in the, in the edge map. And if there is an edge, like edge mean like all the connected pixels, if all the connected pixels are below this threshold high, we say it's not an edge. So this is kind of a weak edge. But if we find there is an edge in which like some of the pixels are actually above high, and some of them are below high. So we will discount them and we will say that, okay, this still discounts as an edge. So we discount all these pixel values, pixel locations, and instead, like when they were uh, lower than the high threshold, still we are counting them as an edge, okay? And of course, like if the whole edge is like above this high, that's definitely an edge. And if the whole edge is like below this uh, low, that's not an edge. Okay, so this is just these are just the, ste just the steps like which I uh, briefly explained in the previous slide. Now, one interesting question here is when we're trying to find like the connectedness of the pixels, whether like those are neighbors or not, there are different ways to do that. We can have four connectedness. Like if we are looking at this pixel value, uh, so if if they are connected like in this neighboring way, like left, right top and bottom, we say they are connected. So this is like four connectedness. This is eight connectedness. And we have to do this because we have a discrete space. It's not continuous, right? And we can have like other variants, like maybe in the diagonal or in the other diagonal, which is fine. Okay. So the idea here is, let's say you have this pixel. You, it will have some kind of magnitude. You have this pixel, some magnitude. And if these are neighboring pixels, then you can say like they belong to the same connected component. Okay. So if we if you use like that uh, hysteresis thresholding on top of non-maximum suppression, you can see like this is a much nicer result uh, we have seen uh, so far. Okay, much better than all the other algorithms. So this is kind of suppressing all the non-negative edges. Now, as we saw, the effect of Gaussian kernel on uh, Marhildreth the same effect will be uh, seen here. If this is an original image, let's say if you use a standard deviation of one, you will get something like this. You can see like we are still able to detect these fine level edges here. And if we increase the standard deviation, which means we are looking at a bigger neighborhood. So these fine grain edges are actually being disappearing and we are getting like a bigger high, uh, like a coarse level picture, okay? So again, it depends like what kind of edges you are interested in. If you really want to detect like these fine grain edges, 
use a Gaussian kernel with a small standard deviation. If you're not interested in fine grain, uh, fine grain edges, you want like just a coarse level picture, what's the like high level structure of this image, then you can use like a high uh, standard deviation. Okay, and of course, these are like traditional approaches. These days we have many like advanced deep learning algorithms to detect edges, which gives you much uh, better performance even like some of the recent, and these are not recent methods. I think these should be from 2017 or 18. I don't exactly remember, but you can see like they're already matching the human level performance. Okay, later we will see like if we are fast enough to cover all the topics and we have time, we will try to touch upon this aspect.